everyone. Welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Brie. And I'm Tori. Today we are here for part two of TXT's Minnesota 3 Tomorrow album. If I just said part two and your brain went, huh? Go check out part one. We reacted to Studio Tune, Deja Vu. We reacted to the other songs you're not going to see in this part. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. No, wait. We, we jumped at the end of part one. Oh, ready? 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 Uh, we're hey, here. we're here part two. Hey, what's up? All right. So <laughs> Should I have waved? Because we ended a wave in. <laughs> did, I didn't know what you did for it's a fine. minute. Um, okay. Moving on. Because I, I want yes. to know what this song is. The we unit songs. are jumping straight in. Yes, we are going to be jumping straight in with The Killa. And then we've got, right after it, will be... Um, Quarter Life, and then after that, the end of the album will be the Deja Vu Anamoya remix. My brain really wants to still say Deja Voya. Just it's say fine. it. Let it free. Let it free. Okay. All, All right. right. The We're Killa. Gonna go ahead and jump in with Yunjun Subin, uh, The Killa. I belong to you. You? You? Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it. Pause warning just in case if you missed that from the first video. Let's go. Oh, oh. I'm so sorry. He said what? that up <laughs> i'm a little taken like, aback i'm a little taken aback <laughs> how dare you go from miracle to this Sudden Spanish was also extremely unexpected. What? I was gonna say it feels almost Latin in a way.
There was like no buffer in between Miracle or the Killa, so I'm just like, no. <laughs> There's no buffer. <laughs> Went from a zero to hundred real quick. Huh? Y'all saw that. We even have to talk about it. Y'all saw that too. Please hand me the comfort cactus for all things that I need. I need the comfort cactus. Thank you. I need the comfort. Um, First of all, I do not know what Latin spice they ingested this day and what spice in general they ingested the day that they not only, like, I guess, created the song but uh, sang it in the studio and put it all together okay so that was first what's second of all i don't know oh i was helping you count thank you no uh no second of all is these vocals i the the almost like I don't want to say they were mumble singing because they were not, but it was like a breathy, just, seductive. Whisper. It was very sultry. Yeonjun does this thing a lot with his voice when he's trying to kind of um, go down this path or like this sort of style. And in my mind, I call it a sort of whine, and I don't think he sounds whiny. That's not what I oh, mean. I know you're but like about. when he it's kind like of slides into the beginning of a note. If I do it, it's not going to come out right. But like at the beginning of a note, he almost just like starts at the bottom of it and slides up into it. And it creates almost like this sort of like whine into it that he's doing. It, it makes the way he pronounces it very interesting. Yes. Yeah. And I always have loved that. And I feel like you heard that so much in the song. And then with Subin, it was so... I, Wait, s- s- I don't know how to snap an S. Um, it's going to be backwards for them, but it, I got it. Um... It was very breathy, very light, and just airy, and we went both, like, lower pitch, we had the high pitch, it was absolutely stunning. You want to talk about the lyrics? Hey, we, you saw it. The we killer. Did, we did, too. Uh. I do not know what persona this is Grown about, up. or what it, it, I think we even had a comment that was, like, they're... A little like the I guess it was a little bit more mature the themes or the way I am all for that like I like to be clear we are a hundred percent here for it just not what we expected going straight from miracle to this and we're a little taken aback but I, I yeah. am not so here for it this song being so consumed or wanting to be like consumed by another person mm-hmm. like you very much got it it felt very like. I giving them everything. It, get, like, it felt the song felt very syrupy to me. Yes, that's a really good word. Like laying everything mm. down, like right in front of them. Like laying just everything that you have is right there in front of them for them to, like, to take or to use a you know their will. And it was just very sultry, very syrupy. I think that was a really good word. I really, I feel like I'm going to be doing this every time I listen to it without fail. I love that. That was absolutely gorgeous. From their vocals, too. I just... Fire emojis. I wish I could send them up in editing. Like, <laughs> Okay. All right. So what do you think we're going to get with quarter live? Quarter live? Don't mute it. I, I accidentally played it. And muted it. That's just because it always starts when you... Oh. Look at these photos. This photo, All right. Not that concept... A little bit lighter already. Oh, I fucked it up. Once 
I'm gonna go back just to this chorus because the way that they did the chorus threw me straight back to like my punk rock emo <laughs> love of music. And I, I'll talk about like the mature conversation we're having here at the end, but mm -hmm. I'm just absolutely loving this. This right here. And then the acoustic. <laughs> oh man that was okay back up going from the killer i anywhere from the killer okay <laughs> but then like i almost like immediately started tearing up in this one i was not ready for the emotional whiplash that i was about to receive um that that's going to just be one of my most probably like replayed songs by the end of the year, I think. Um, I feel like it is very raw and very vulnerable and real. And like we were just talking about them kind of um, going into like the mature concepts. This would be one of those kind mm -hmm. of having that conversation of like, how scary getting older is and how there's so many unknowns and how lonely it can feel. But at the same time, I really liked that it was like, um, even if it's difficult, we're going to keep moving forward. Or even if this is a like the dark part of our life, this could just be the darkest one and we're going to find light again soon. But I really um, was not expecting, like, I guess I could have thought of it quarter life, but I didn't think about it being like a quarter life crisis. I didn't, I didn't, consider that and so that really really got me <laughs> i kind of i kind of did considering their ages and it was called quarter life i was thinking that it might have something to do with that not my like brain crisis, not my light bulb but I, I did think they might have been talking about that that age i guess um the about uh, like i guess the lyrics of them saying that this might be the hardest time and then i may have like screwed things up with the way i did i mean i can't even imagine like growing up the way they and, and like a lot of idols have when like you spend your like childhood and even your adulthood doing like the things that they do mm -hmm. like because they're busy 24 7 they're all constantly on screen they're constantly go 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 you don't have the same like experiences as the majority of the world has you mm -hmm. know what i mean and then on the flip side of that you can also if you're a listener um and you're going through that kind of time, even if it's not your quarter life crisis, you could be anywhere in your life and you could be having a crisis. It's mm -hmm. almost still like that same thing can apply to you where you're like, you kind of just are sitting down and you're like, this is a really hard time. And have I screwed everything up? Like, wh where do I go from here? But I like that it was like, it, first of all, you ask yourself, have I yeah. like screwed everything up? But I also, I don't want to ask myself that right. because I want to keep moving forward. I was going to say, yeah. they talked about continuing forward. I, uh, like there was, I don't remember which line it was, but I saw it was like something about like not giving. I don't know if it was not giving up or um, their pull through, mm -hmm. as if we're wandering. I mean, you're you're gonna always the whole life is about wandering, but constantly man, finding yourself. 
talk about like being so real with saying like becoming an adult is like an answer mm-hmm. sheet with no right answer. Like there, there, there really isn't. And we kind of are like raised to believe that everything's perfect and beautiful and wonderful when you get to be an adult and then you become an adult and you come to find out like adults are humans too. And even if like, if you are an adult or if you're coming up to that, like everybody is human and everybody goes through these phases of like life is scary. Things are hard. And I think that I got really emotional because like things can be really difficult at work and things and just in life in general. And I think this song like, really, stuck really just hit right now. Yeah. Um, when you hit it, a wall and you're like, what am I doing with my life? Where am I? This song can hit. I feel like it's going to hit with like and resonate with many different people and it may not have resonated with you right in this moment, but it might one day and you can come back to the song and, and feel those feelings with it and kind of work through it. And I, I love songs like that, that you can kind of turn to and almost lean on and feel like you're not alone in that feeling. I had a thought and this could be completely, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, completely out of like left field and um, I'm going to skirt a little bit, but like just thinking about the album as a whole is what we've heard so far. I know we still have one song left, right? Yes. Um, the killer. If we look in, if we're looking at this song about them growing up and, um, kind of like their struggles and where the kind of like where we are now but if I'm looking not like completely at the lyrics do you think that the killer itself could be maybe like I don't know the music the industry, the industry. yeah mm-hmm. and almost being consumed by it mm-hmm. and it's Willing kind of seductive it you everything. want to give it everything I know I'm like I should have said this in the last one but it just came to me now after listening to this because I've been trying to puzzle where that song fits in on this album well I mean because the industry this life does dominate them and and they talked about that as well and they basically do lay everything out for this job and for this lifestyle and so I could very much see that but kind of just like put that a little bit more into perspective for me I think after a song like that we both a little shook and we're like I don't know what just happened and I can't think of anything that connects but that's bing after listening to Quarter Life, I kind of feel like that they're probably on a similar kind of theme and talking about where they're at in life and how they like experience it that they're going through. So I could see that being. If you did, if, if that is what it is and you commented that like on the killer, edit your comment be like, haha, you got it. If, if you're we're way off. Here right now. If you haven't yeah. skipped ahead to the next if, song. If we're way off and it's totally not about Pretend that. Pretend like I never just, said it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but okay. All right. So now <laughs> we have the last one, which is Deja Vu and Amoya. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am very curious about this. Considering Deja Vu is like when you like have that like glimpse of a familiar Fili- feeling, feeling or yeah. like memory or something, but you can't quite put your finger on what it is. And then with Anamoya being like having nostalgia for something you've never experienced could just be like a hype remix and it has nothing to do with those two words. But I feel like there's a just, reason I would just call that. So. Yeah. The mm-hmm. layering and the doubling, like the echo. Okay, yeah, hey, 
Interesting. That was very much like I knew the song but didn't. <laughs> yes, and they would like kind of catch you off guard with these moments where you were like, "Oh, oh, wait, no, like I'm, I'm, I'm still on that," or "No, I haven't let go of that that word," or like, "Yes, I remember that. That's just what that was." And so, because it like, was, yeah, the it like, was a choice not to wait a beat before the like um, repetition, mm -hmm. and so like instead of saying like. Um, find a random spot. Oh good, the blank spot. That's the one I'm going to find. Oh, you can't see it because I took it away. That would help. Um You somehow highlighted the I don't know how I did that. So like if I said the word like um I like you're all I need need, you would have that repetition almost like a beat later, but mm -hmm. instead they chose to do it like you're all I need need. And it was, it really was like, you just almost like couldn't get rid of that feeling immediately or like you were thrown right back to it when you thought you mm -hmm. were about to like move on from it. And that was a really interesting creative choice, like I think. Very like off kilter, like doubling, like almost like an echo, like immediately. And it was yes. just like, what, what, and what? It felt like you were kind of like stuck in that echo and then all of a sudden you were being moved forward and then it would happen again. And I think that. That like is a, brilliant. I, like a skip when the CD would skip. <laughs> I don't know who thought of that or like an automatic replay. Like, I don't know who thought of that, but that is such a brilliant and interesting way to do that. And then this also kind of felt almost more like a more acoustic version. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more like the instrumental yes. uh, was came through and like the guitar and stuff almost a little bit more like a raw type rock sound too. I agree. That was pretty. That was really pretty. It's going to throw me off because, like, I'll probably, like, listen to the just the whole album in the car, and then one of them will start playing, and I might not click to which one it is, and all of a sudden it'll be like, neat, neat, and I'll be like, oh. Make but sure I feel like that's go. literally the point. It kind of, like, catches you off guard, or it just kind of makes you, like, almost double in your tracks. So you're like, wait a second. Which is interesting, too, because starting the album kind of off kilter and ending it kind of off kilter at the same mm -hmm. time. Yep. I like that. Okay. Almost like unsettling in a way. Well, ain't that life? Yes, it that is. Ain't that growing? Um, this completes our album reaction. This was a very beautiful album, a very emotional album in terms of just them being very honest and very vocal about just their like feelings at the time or how they were feeling towards fans. Or each other or what the case may be but I just felt like there was a lot of emotion in this album yeah um and just from start to finish it was just every song had its own message and journey like within the album itself and so it was really nice to go on that so thank you for going on that journey with us let us know what you guys think about this album let us know how you're feeling about the songs like if there's some you're playing more than others because that you vibe with it if you're playing them all all the time because you love them all because they're all amazing. Just curious how you guys are feeling about it. So let us know. Thank you so much for watching this and watching part one. We love you so much and we will see you in the next one.